along in the days, you know, in my early days when I was a young fellow, just we just begin to get around with the, with the cowboys, you know. Cowboys, you know, we come in those days. We, we'd come just before they get it, get into town, you know. About time they get in where they could be heard in town, you know. They'd come just a little out of war hoop. Maybe they'd be just coming kind of trotting along, you know. But just before, just before they get into town, right? They let out a war hoop and they come in, come in. Come in on a run, you know, the cowboys come in, everybody holler, cowboy, cowboy is coming into town tonight, coming into town. Some guy, you know, after they come in, come in there, uh, come walking in the saloon, bunch, set his hat clear back on the back end of his head, says, I'm a wild wolf from Bill Creek, cowboys, it's my night to howl. Some of these events have already been documented or have been recorded from letters, diaries, and annals. But much of the material here is recorded for the first time, as told to us by Walter Jackson. Must have come up with the XIT bunch. Last year, about 10 of them come into town, made a real ruckus. Hope they're not looking for trouble. After the cattle drive, some blacks would travel on into the region, hoping to find a friendly town. Looking for a place to spend their hard-earned money. How long are we going to be at this place? Oh, I expect long enough to wet a whistle. Hey, get a horse and some water. Maybe pick up a few tips. Well, I'll be back. Where are you going? Where are you going? Well, I'll be back. Where are you going? I'll be back. Where are you going, Georgie? Well, I'm going to go and send off this letter. I'm writing that letter for darn near a month. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, yeah. Uh, you finished it? Yeah, I finished. Uh, you got an address to send it to? <sighs> hey, it's gonna get there. Let's get there. What's going on in there, Thatch? Cost me ninety dollars, gentlemen. I think I'll just call. When you do. Yeah, well, I gotta keep the game honest off. I'll stay in and take two. Well, <laughs> don't like it's gonna cost old Charlie ninety dollars. I think I'll just call. I 
How about you, Thatch? I'm Pat. And a deal will take three. There were stories about a few blacks that had skills other than being good cattle hands. Old Charlie was so good at cards that he could deal his partner a winning hand while controlling all the good cards in a deck. He could deal himself any card he wanted at any time. That's on you, dude. Dad, I think I'll keep this dude in for, ah, 50 bucks. I'll see you, 150. I'll race you, no, Too strong for me, gentlemen. I think I'm a foe. <laughs> yeah, I think I gotta keep the game on. I'll, I'll lay her in here, by God. I got, I got a full house. <laughs> Where'd you learn to play cards like that? Here, now. Suppose we don't like the way you play cards. Well, then you boys just better do a little practicing. You might better go, Thatcher. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just uh, called a hand. It's been a pleasure, gentlemen. See you, boys. We know there were other black men during this time, but what about the black woman of the Northwest? The records show a woman named Mary Fields. We asked Walter Jackson if he knew her. Mary, Mary Fields, she was, she was a noted uh, woman up to uh, that country, the Cheshire country, but I heard a lot about her, but the later years I've just kind of just kind of run a, got a, out of my mind. But she was she was a no, noted character, Mary Fields. Yeah, that, that name just sounds uh, so familiar to me that I just almost see her, you know now. Mary Fields was a legend in her own time. She was one of the most powerful characters to stride the Rocky Mountain trails. She was born in May 1832 in a Tennessee slave cabin and later worked on an Ohio river boat. In 1885, Mary came to Montana to help the missionaries at St. Peter's Mission in Cascade. And there she became a freight hauler. She was always heavily armed and was a match for any male who tried to trample on her rights or privileges. This became evident when she knocked out a man who failed to pay his debt. The town, however, would boast that she could whip any two men. But in spite of the claims, 
Mary had a tender spot for the children of the St. Peter's Mission, and from all indications, the children loved her. Good to see you, Mary. Howdy, Mother. I'm so glad that you are here. I'm afraid the child has taken a turn for the worse. Did you bring the medicine? Yes, ma'am. I got it. Hand in hand, and you can never lose them. 
Sometimes you may forget to use them. But you never lose them. You never forget the names. Faith and courage. Do I have faith and courage? Can you stay for supper, Mary? Oh, that's mighty nice of you, sister, but... I better get on out there before it gets dark. That night, during a heavy snowstorm, the wolves attacked her wagon. The horses bolted, overturned the wagon, and dumped Mary Fields and her supplies in the snow. Although she spent a lonely night surrounded by wolves, she kept them at bay with her rifle. She killed several, knowing that the others would eat the fallen. Uh, damn you, ornery critter. Come on, come on. Just let me see ya. Tonight, baby. Not tonight, say you won't. Uh, uh, yes, sir. By morning, Mary's horses returned, and with their help, she lifted the wagon upright and continued on with her deliveries.
Mary Fields was just one of several black women who made a contribution in settling the Northwest that should be remembered. Another woman Walter Jackson talked about was Cattle Kate. This Cattle Kate, you know, she, she, Cattle Kate owned a cow ranch, had a cow ranch, and she, she was quite a cow hand, quite a cow hand herself. In the later days, Cattle Kate got to where she did a lot of rustling. She had been, they had warned her a lot of time, you know, the stockman about, say, Kate, we'll, Kate, some of these days, we're gonna hang you some of these days. They said, when we, when we really get it on, really get it on, we're, we're gonna hang you. So, it is the last one time that the cattle case had did some wrestling. And they had caught, they had caught up with it on this wrestling. And they say, well, this time, we're gonna, we're gonna scare cattle case so bad that she, she, she won't do any, do any more wrestling. So they, they come, a bunch come and got Cattle Kate and they put her in a wagon and a cu couple got in with the wagon and they, the other fellas, the other fellas ro rode on ahead, rode on ahead and they swung a rope, a rope up over the limb and drove, drove in on the, drove in on the, this, this uh, rope. Hollow spot there. Now get her over to the side a little bit more. That's pretty good. Here they come. Here they come. Oh, minute now. Hey, boys, I can take a joke, but this ain't funny. Johnny? Hey, let me down! Let me down! Let me down! Let me down! Hey! Boy! Boy, you better... Now, you know I'm gonna tear in your hide. All of you, you... But you in it, too. Don't be walking away. Boy! Johnny, you, you can sneak away if you want like a dog. I remember you. And you, well, honey, you better get out of town. Let go of me. What you that? Go of me? Get your hands off me. I'm going to whip your head and tear you apart. She's scared. She's really scared. Say your prayers. Say your prayers, Calafina. You know, rat. Tell you I will have to I'll stop you on the ground. You what? I didn't say you didn't do it. I didn't. Hey, everything I got is mine. You understand? Russell, I took my own cattle. You better get out of here, boy. Cause when I get down, it's you first, and me next, and you and you. Listen, cattle, Kate. Tell him you won't take them. Tell him you won't do it again. Please. Police win again. When this is over, you're going to regret this. You know that? Yeah. You know that? Can't you just, just admit it? Let go of me. Let go of me. Get out of here. Let go of me! Let go of me! Get up here and get this off! Get up here! Get up here! Up here, somebody! Get up here! Get me down from here. Get me down from here. Lord, I didn't come here for no hanging, so don't let there be one. Hey, let me down. Get me down from here! Someone let me down from here! Get it! 
you take these ranch horses are pretty lively. They they had this rope fooling around up over Castle Case head, you know, like they're gonna put the loop down over. When they did that, she come come as kicking, kicking and stomping, you know, on on, on the uh, bed bed of the wagon. We warned you, and you wouldn't listen. Get this rope off my neck. Get it off. Get it off. Get this rope off my neck. Get it off my neck. Get it off. Get it off. Get her down! Get her down! When she hollered, she started to holler, get that rope off of my neck, you know. When she started to say that, well, she started the team up. The team, the team started up. They, they, they reached, the guy reached, you know, tried to get a hold of that loop and pull it off. But the, the team had pulled up so much slack in the rope that they couldn't get it off. So the team ran out from under and she dropped, dropped down. He, they grabbed that, they grabbed that to loop, you know, but this, the, the, the slack was taken up so fast, so fast they, they couldn't get it. They, they couldn't get it off. They, they, were, they were sorry, you know, that, that it happened, but uh, that, was, that was the way it happened. It wasn't intentionally. It's a, lot, it's a lot more. I think that takes care of it for now. The events of these black cowboys and black women took place from 1865 to 1890. Some stayed in the Northwest and became homesteaders. Others returned to Texas and to other parts of the country. 